We're live. We're back. Guy Think Podcast. We're on episode 80. Uh, we're creeping to 100 episodes. Uh, very, very excited for this episode, as I always am. But this is a big one. Uh, we got Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, baby. It's my favorite combat sport in the world. I, I always talk about it. I'm always very excited about it. Um, and I've been to the events. I've had the fighters on. Uh, tonight's a great episode because the co-main event this Saturday, February 15th, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on pay-per-view, we have Caleb Harris, the winner of the 2019 Knockout of the Year, uh, versus the beast himself, Jim Ehlers, who was Fighter of the Year in Bare Knuckle in 2019. So we got two amazing fighters that are going to be going head-to-head. -head. In my personal opinion, it's going to be my favorite fight of the night. I just know it. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so they are here. They are going to be on the show live. They're on standby right now. But I uh, got to do it. Got to shout out my sponsors. So, guys, thank you. Welcome to the live experience. Fans, please, uh, viewers, you can interact, ask questions, do anything you like. Uh, we'll pull those questions up, and uh, Caleb and Jim will be able to uh, answer those questions for you, hopefully. And uh, also, do me a favor. Follow me, a Guy Think Podcast, all over social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere, and also on the website, guythinkpodcast.com. You can check out the guests that have been on, stuff that's coming up, as well as the analytics. So check that out and subscribe. Guys, that does, that does me a lot of good, helps me grow the show. And a shout out to my sponsors, Deck Masters of South Florida. They're the best in the game. If you need a deck in your backyard, they're amazing. They make it look like a resort, as well as my boy, Frank Cristiano, over at Cross Country Mortgages. He closes loans in seven days, 561-504-1278. And of course, uh, my other sponsor, which is Hemp Boca, for all, your, all of your CBD products, give them a shout. They're at www.hempboca.com. So you want to check them out. But without further ado, I want to bring up Caleb Harris and Jimmy Ellers. Let's get this party started, guys. Caleb, Jim, how you guys doing tonight? Great. Oh, man, I'm good, man. I feel great. Awesome, man. Jim, could you get Nick? There you go, Jim. Go. I got to, I got to, I got to see that pretty face, brother. <laughs> I'm turn wrong. So, uh, guys, we got a very, very uh, amazing event coming up. Now, I wanted to ask you guys. I don't know, like uh, everything that was happening behind the scenes, but I know a lot of people that are friends of mine that have been reaching out. They're like, "Hey, what's going on with BKFC 10?" It's getting down to the wire. I don't see a fight card yet. Uh, it was supposed to be in Miami. Now it's in Fort Lauderdale. What was any intake on that? What was going on with that? Honestly, we didn't we didn't know a whole lot about it until just a, just about two or three weeks ago. To be honest with you, we actually had a conversation trying to figure it out. Yeah, man. Caleb and I we were exchanging back and forth, and we're just like, "Hey, have you heard of anything?" You know, um, I think you know. I just think they have a lot of um, good ideas and good plans that they they're trying to put together and um you know they got the first half of it and i think they're just trying to make sure that the the other half is just as fire as this as as our half you know we got four exciting fight four four exciting fighters two exciting fights on our half so the other half can't be a um a pretty easy side or just like a lackluster side it has to be the same talent so i'm sure they're looking for that and um i guess we'll all find out soon enough Absolutely, man. Uh, I know it's going to be at the Broward Convention Center. Uh, that place is uh, it's a nice spot. Uh, so I, you know, I don't know how many people it packs, but I'm sure a few thousand people are going to be there. So it's going to be a, a pretty big event, pay per view, obviously. Uh, so it's exciting. But Jim, I wanted to start with you first. Uh, so you were in the votes for Fighter of the Year for 2019 at Bare Knuckle. It was down to the wire between you and Johnny Bedford. Uh, from the polls, it looked like in the beginning, Johnny Bedford was going to take it. And at the end, you just uh, you just took the whole thing now. And it's exciting. Uh, in my opinion, I definitely felt that you deserve to be the, the fighter of the year. The three knockouts, three, and oh, um, you know, just amazing, fast starting. Everything that you've done has been great. Uh, what, what do you feel personally uh, when you when you received that honor? What did you feel that why you deserved that that honor? Um, you know, it, it was, it was pretty tough going against Johnny Bedford because, um, jo Johnny, Johnny, I feel is, is probably my favorite fighter in bare knuckle FC. I, I love his style. Um, you know, I've, I've stolen some things from, from his fights that I use in my own fights. 
and it was it was really hard to go against him and i and honestly man like even though i got those three knockouts he 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 deserves to be it just as much as much as i do and um you know he needs to um, just realize man he he put in a lot of work he deserves he deserves it all too but um it felt good to just be kind of acknowledged for for my hard work you know a lot of people kind of counted me out i guess for a lot of fights thinking that i was just a jiu jitsu guy and i just love that i've got to open people's eyes and show them that i i'm much more than just the ground guy that i can bring it to you and i'm going to bring it to you viciously yeah man uh and caleb you know you, i see you smiling over there um what did you think when when jim won that honor oh man i i voted for him i mean all, all respect to johnny um like me and johnny's actually talked um because I love it when fans want to try to play matchmaker, but they have no idea what they're talking about because they wanted to match me up with Johnny at a fight. And I'm like, guys, he's like 30 pounds lighter than me. Do I think Johnny would take the fight? Yes, just because he's a dog. But um, I was like, you know, I do want to train with him. And Bedford immediately responded and was like, you know, hey, man, come train. But, I, I mean, I had to go off of, off of what I've watched and, you know, me and my dad had actually been talking about this before it came up that Jim and Johnny were were in the running for the bare knuckle fighter of the year. And me and my dad, we were both saying that we like Jim, uh, Jim, as far as he's, he was literally our, and this is not just because I'm fighting him, mm -hmm. but he literally was my favorite fighter to, to watch in BKSC. Like I actually bought the, the last fight against Julian Lane because I wanted to watch his fight. And this was before I ever, uh, knew that there was going to be a chance of me and him fighting each other. Um, so, you know, I, I think I think it was well deserved. Um, you know, Bedford is is just as much deserving. That's for sure. I mean, the dude's been on like what half of the entire BKFC cards. I mean, and he's he's undefeated. So, I mean, uh, he's he's put on some wars, and he's always going to put on a great show. He's in, he's uh, he's definitely an incredible fighter, at Bedford. I had him on the podcast as well. Great guy too, man. I mean, just uh, a good dude all around. Real real gentleman. Um, so Caleb, you're BKFC 2019 Knockout Winner of the Year. Uh, so it's pretty cool that both of you guys received honors, and now you're in the 155 tournament. Uh, what was that like for you? I'm really interested. I know we we kind of touched on this before, but time has passed, and that video of of you knocking uh, getting that knockout over 1.5 million views just i believe on the bare knuckle site itself so what was that like for you a guy coming up trying to make a name for himself and now all of a sudden your knockout goes viral what was that like for you man it it blew my mind like um i, I i'm still kind of in shock a little bit i'm starting to accept the role <laughs> that i'm at a higher level in in the sports game now but um you know, it was just the right punch at the right time with the right game plan. Um, you know, but I went – before that knockout, I went from a nobody basically as a local MMA fighter to now I'm co-main eventing um, a fight in Florida that – in a place I've never been before against a former UFC vet. Like, you know, it, it, it's amazing at what can happen in a year. And so, like, I it just – when I – I kind of figured I was going to win it when they put it up to a vote and they only put my picture up. Like, <laughs> by the way, Jim, when you caught Julian with that uppercut right before the end of the fight, if he had went down, that I'm pretty great. sure that would have been in the wrong <laughs> court. I, I was surprised he got up, man. I was surprised he got up. That dude, yeah. is, I didn't realize he had as many bare knuckle fights as he as had a lot. He had a lot. But, um, but yeah, as far as winning the honor of knockout of the year, like I've been chasing that that knockout for eight years, man. Like I've won fights every way possible in MMA. I've TKO'd. I've I've won by submission. I've won. I've actually had a guy yell to the ref to stop the fight. Um, I've had everything but a true blue knockout, and then just to have the cleanest knockout that I, I've seen in a long time, like. Because my favorite knockout artist is Mark Hunt. Just the walkaway knock knockouts are just amazing <laughs> to me. Yeah. And like I like almost, a walk off home run, you know. I, I <laughs> almost cried. I'm not gonna lie. I almost cried when that happened. But is it was a great honor and I'm I'm looking to just keep moving and, and, and climbing the ladder. Man, it was it was crazy because 
I ended up cutting weight with your opponent that day. So, you know, I, I, I didn't know who either one of you guys were. And so I'm cutting weight with him. And so he, you know, we're in, we're in the sauna. We get to know each other a little bit. So I don't know who Caleb is. I don't know who he is really, but I, I know him a little bit. So in my mind, I'm going, I'm going for this guy who I just yeah. met. He was, he was cool. You know, I'm like, all right. And I was like, I, I, I remember watching that fight. I was, I um, walked out of the locker room. Cause I was like, Oh, I'm, I want to watch this fight. And I watched it and I was just like, damn, I, that, that was something like I, I, I haven't seen before. So it was really cool to see that. I, I don't think we've seen, I mean, a couple, but nothing like that. And in, in, especially in bare knuckle. Like when you told me that, that you actually were in there in the sauna with him cutting, cause he, he missed weight by about two pounds. And before everybody started giving him crap, I actually told him, I was like, hold on, let me just see what I weigh, you know, because I've, I've let fighters go for a pound or two. Because, I mean, in my opinion, at that point, as long as I know that you're trying, you're good. But I stepped on the scales at like 63. So he was 67. I was like, look, dude, like, you know, just go try and cut. Like, I don't care if you don't get but half a pound off. Just go try. And his coach came back and said, man, look, he's done. And then I was kind of sitting back there, kind of feeling a little, oh, little something was, about it. And he and was that, honestly drained. I think. I, I mean, like I said, I don't know him. I don't remember his name really. But he, he. I remember he was in, the, he was in the sauna with like a sauna suit. And I remember telling him, like, man, you know, you could die in here with a sauna suit. I'm like, I don't think it's a good idea. And well, he's like, oh, I got this. <laughs> and and that's the thing. Like when I heard you, when I heard you say that, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, all right, this guy's been in the game a while. Like, he knows what the he, he knows what it what it looks like when a fighter's really cutting. Cause I've missed weight once in my life. I I and I was the same way as him, apparently. I was in the sauna room with a sauna suit on and I just quit sweating. Like I just there was no more sweat coming out of me. So it was like, you know, okay, I'm done. So when once Jim told me that, I was like, all right, you know what? If they're they'll David will comp me a little bit because he missed weight, you know, we're good. I, I'm not gonna sit there because uh, I mean I think half the fighters on that card showed up overweight anyways. So yeah. I always do my best, and I, I I know he I at least tried. So after that, I was like, all right, I'm cool, and so I just went out there and I didn't even think about it. What's uh? What are some of the things that you do? Uh, we got a little tech issue with that uh, video there. But what are some of the things that you do uh, to cut weight? Any uh, you know, anything like he anything healthy that you do to cut weight, or anything that you know it's not going to harm your body to try to take any shortcuts or anything like that? Yeah, man, I take. I eat like instead of three slices of pizza, I, I cut it down to about one slice of pizza. All right, um, well, um, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I used to cut from. When I when I fought in the UFC, I, I used to cut from about 185 to 145 um, on an eight week span, and that that was just horrible, man. Like I did it, I never missed weight, you know. And out of all my professional fights, and I, and every time I just got a little bit bigger and bigger. I felt like cut, trying to cut to 145. So um, just the whole I had whole change in just lifestyle, just kind of staying ready all the time, competing and and um, just active 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 just being at the gym owning my own gym now and just mm -hmm. being here and just getting to do what i do every single day it's hard to keep weight on now so i don't really want to cut too much weight i know um bedford and knight and what whoever these little guys are they wanted me to fight at 145 mm -hmm. and i was like you know what those, those days are gone man cutting weight is gone i don't want to cut more than you know 10 pounds at most so Amen. I, tr I try not to cut too much weight yeah man like for me it's I, 55 is, is my lowest. I fought 55 in MMA. I, I, I walked around at 185 and I mean, I, I struggled to, I, I, uh, at times until I got it kind of a nutrition and a diet, right. When it comes to cutting a 55, it's a science for me. Um, I'm kind of like Jim, when I came to bare knuckle, Ooh. I moved up to 165 for, uh, for a reason, but, um, you know, opportunity arose to give me this fight at 55 so you know i said you know what uh I, I can get back down so you know it's uh i i know my days are numbered at 155 i'm actually hoping uh or well not hoping but knowing that this term is going to be uh probably the final point of the 155 reign for me 
So uh, that's that's why I'm coming with everything I got, you know, to win that belt and then move up to, back up into the 165. But uh, you know, just for me, unlike Jim over here who gets to eat pizza, you know, I, I, I <laughs> diet down. I, I'm I'm on fish and asparagus. You know, uh, I mean, it's still healthy living. I mean, mm -hmm. healthy eating, but it's uh it's a little more a little more strict than that. I hear that. And uh, when when did this conversation come up that? Uh, you guys are going to do this tournament because uh, Dave Feldman was on my podcast and he actually broke news that he was going to start this 155 tournament for the strap. So <laughs> when did this come that's, up to you guys? Was that when the news broke to you? That's when I found out, man. In my eyes, I, I'm the on crown king of the 155 pound division, you mm -hmm. know, and basically I'm just doing this tournament just, just to collect my belt. Um, so when I heard that, I was like, oh, man, looks like I got to I gotta do this three more times now. Well, you called me yeah. right after that interview. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yo, man, what, what, put me on this podcast. What is what is happening? <laughs> um, it's it's weird, man. It's just it's they do things a little bit different than I'm used to, uh, you know, so it's I, I'm still getting used to things like just kind of being out of the loop a lot of it or just finding out, you know, like. I, 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 like I said, Caleb and I have messaged a couple times and I'm like, yo, have, have you, have you got this yet? Have they talked to you about this yet? But, um, uh, I mean, they, they definitely, they take care of us. They look out for us for sure, man. I know. Oh, yeah. I just, I just think this time the, he had a lot going on. Dave, Dave had his wedding, man. Congratulations to him on that. And, um, just all, all at the same time, everything was, is trying to get put together. But I think at the end of the day, it's a fire card. And, um, I think, I think everything turned out all right. Bro, in my opinion, I, I and I'm sure you guys are gonna agree, but in my opinion, it's the best card yet out of all the pay per views that Feldman put together. Oh, yeah, this, this card is definitely stacked. Um, I mean, you got that new in and Abby Velasquez, which I think is gonna be a really uh, good you know, surprising right. fight. It's gonna be like a surprise fight of the night candidate. Yeah, it's gonna be a good fight. Uh, but Jim knew he was gonna be in the 155 tournament. Um, I've told I've told Nate and them I would fight from 155 to 170, 75, whatever. I I I just want to fight, man. That's that was pretty much it. But um, looking at it now, I realize that's more of an amateur thing. Like I, I'm I'm looking to claim my weight classes, but uh, as far as being in the tournament, I didn't find out until like I was on the way to teach one night. And Nate hit me up. I'd already hit him up like two or three times for the Florida card because I've never I've never been this this far south into Florida. And um, I was like, dude, do you need anybody on this card? Like, let me know. Like, I'm I'm down to fight. When I heard about the tournament, I was like, let me know, you know, if you need this. Um, I because I told him I was like, if I'm gonna fight at 55, I just need to know because I'm used to cutting to 55 in eight weeks. I don't need to be hit up four weeks out and say, hey, can you make this? You know, because then I gotta, I gotta admit to myself that I can't. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a week or two later, I got hit up with, "Hey, um, you want in this 155 tournament?" I'm like, "Have I not been blowing up your phone already about it?" Like, <laughs> yes, I want in. And so I was like, "Who's my opponent?" He's like, "We'll talk to you about it later." Um, I was like, "Okay." So did you I, think it was going to be Jim at all? I knew me and Jim were running into each other, I, whether it was at 55 or 65, because I'd seen one of his interviews where he said that once he wins the 55 belt, he's coming up to 165. Uh, but so I knew eventually we were going to run into each other, but I did not know it was going to be this soon. I figured what was going to end up happening was Jim and me were going to end up in the finals. Like I, I thought that was going to be the fight. And I thought it was a soon uh, fight too. I was, I mean, it's a great fight, but I was like, Oh shit. Like, it's happening right now. This is crazy. But they called me and basically they they gave me, not to sound too much like Al Pacino, but they gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. It was a win-win for me nice. uh, signing on to fight in this tournament. Uh, and so then they then they dropped the, – uh, I've already told Nate, I'll fight anybody. That, that's just how our gym is at Black Sales and Primal. Uh, I don't care who the name is. But then he says, I understand that. He's like, but I have to tell you, it's Jim Allers. Do you accept? And I immediately said, hell yes, let's do it. But then I said, wait, if me and Jim are fighting first, who else is in this tournament? Like, and he, he said some names that I don't, I don't even really remember anymore. Um, and, uh, and yeah, from that point, I, I literally was getting ready to do Saturday morning rounds and I walked in like bouncing off the walls. Like my coach was like, what the hell's wrong with you? And I was like, I'm fighting Jim Allers in the tournament. And, uh, 
in February. And that just, from that point on, fight camp rolled on into what it is. Amazing, man. And what about, Jim, have you made any adjustments uh, in your training camp or in your training regimen uh, to prepare for this fight? Uh, especially, you know, Caleb has displayed some power, obviously, with the knockout. Uh, so what, what's your mindset been in your training camp? Man, I just, you know, sometime like maybe a year and a half ago, I just was like, man, I think the one thing that messes me up in fights is that I get too much ring rust. Um, once I started feeling like I was like, man, I can make it to the UFC. I was close enough. I felt it, you know. I kind of stopped competing in other in other events because I was like, man, I could mess this all up if I get hurt. And I realized that when I started to do that and I stopped, I stopped just staying ready and just getting ready for my fights, um, that it, it definitely affected my um, performances. So now, I mean, mm. I just literally stay ready. I'm always training. I'm always in fight camp. You know, I'm always within, you know, that 10 pounds or so, so that I can make weight easy and go at it. Uh, any, any changes? Um, I mean, I've watched some film and I caught some things that I saw. Um, Caleb and I have, man, very similar style. We both are coming forward. We both are trying to take the center. So um, just with that, I think um, I, I kind of found out some things that will work for me. And, and we'll see, man, it just one punch can change, can change the whole fight. So I can have Very this true. whole idea and boom, I get hit with something. And now boom, that's out the window, man. So we'll see, man. And then hopefully I just make the right decisions from there. What about you, Caleb? Uh, obviously Jim is a very fast starter. Uh, he charges like a bull and uh, he's mastered that dirty boxing. It seems like these uh, powerful uppercuts, ha you know, have you made any changes in your camp and your training regimen to, uh, you know, to defend against something like that? Man, not to sound cliche, but I'm never the same fighter twice. Um, I, even when I win, like I get to celebrate that night and then I get hit by my coach the very next morning or very next day uh, on the way home or whatever. All right, this is some things that you did great, but here's what we're going to change. And, um, yeah, I've, I've watched film on Jim. I've watched uh, – this is to all 155 and 65ers out there. I've watched film on you. Um, if 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 I, I think I have the potential of fighting you, I've watched film at some point or another. Um, like Jim said, one punch can change the whole thing, and I don't ever expect a fighter to come out fighting exactly the same way. Right. Um, I've seen a few things that are common that, that Jim likes to do that uh, we've, we've made plans uh, for, but, um, you know – Things can change. Um, me and him both, we do. We we have really aggressive mindsets when it comes to fighting. Uh, me and him both are real big cardio based. We we're ready to throw punches from the time the bell rings till the time it rings again. You know, so it's definitely going to be a fireworks show, and it's it's going to be on who catches who, and and uh, mm -hmm. it's going to be on who can take the least amount of damage when it comes to this fight. Y'all go ahead and know you got knockout of the year and fighter of the year, and you fixing to have fight of the year already in 2020 yeah it's it's going to be incredible um I, i'm excited you know just me as a, as a fan thinking about it you know one of the things that comes to my mind is uh because jim you're a very fast starter um you know i'm just wondering and you, of course you don't have to answer these questions because we got to keep some things uh, a secret but in my man, mind there's no I'm secrets, like, man oh, there's, no, cool. there's no secrets in this game it's hard work dedication i'm in there putting in the work every day why am I going to change something that's not broken, man? I, I can show you. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, and, and it's going to work. It's going to happen. It's going to go in there. All right? Well, that's, that's, there's no secrets. I'm curious that uh, because you're a fast starter and knowing that the power Caleb has, are uh, you going to be a little more patient, uh, a little more calculated, or it's going to be that you know bull rush mentality for you? <laughs> um, man, it's, it's like basically what I say is, man, Live by the sword, die by the sword, man. Yeah. I'm not in there to to patty cake around and and go to a five round decision. I rather end it all in in there and end my record in there and know that I I tried everything I can to finish that fight mm -hmm. than than win by a boring ass fight. That's not my style. I I hope I never have to win like that. So we're we're coming out there and, and both of us are looking for that knockout. None of us are trying to go in and go to decision. And if you're a fighter that does that, man, 
I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not the type of guy that's going to go in there and dance with you. I like it. I love it. That's why I really enjoy watching you, man. It's, it's always fun. I've told you that when I met you in Tampa, just, uh, really enjoy it. And for you, Caleb, uh, how do you defend against something like that? Uh, you know, he's going to rush you like a bull. He's going to grab you behind the neck. He's going to uppercut you. What do you, what, what does a guy like you have to do to, uh, to defend that? Man, uh, you know, when you're dealing with a bull, the only way to beat the bull is you got to be the matador. But I'm, I'm the same way as, as what Jim said. You know, there's a difference in playing patty cake like Floyd Mayweather does and, and being a stylistic uh, boxer. Um, you know, you have, to, you have to know when to move and when, when, when to plant and when to throw. And, and I'm down. I was raised by a, a, a short man that boxed. So I'm down for the dirty boxing. I've got long arms. I'm down for the long range fight. I'm, I'm any, I can, I can fight anywhere I need to fight at. And, you know, when it comes to an aggressive guy like Jim, you know, you got one of two things. You either, you either get out of the way and hit the angles or you meet him head on. And I'm, I'm down, whichever one proceeds, I'm down for Just go ahead and know, no matter what, I'll never play patty cake with somebody. I may outbox them, but I'll never play patty cake. And I'm not, and I'm I'm with Jim. This this fight won't go five rounds. I don't think it's going to go five rounds a, either. That's not a disrespect thing. That's just two warriors fixing to go lay down on their swords. I mean, it's this fight will not go to decision. I I could not agree with you more. I I, I would be surprised if it goes to the second round. To, and that's just me as a fan talking. What do you think, Jim? You want me to call it again, like I did last time? Go for it, big dog. Man, uh, I'll be surprised if it goes to the third. I'm calling um, definitely a stoppage by me in the third. Okay. Oh, are wow, you calling three rounds? What about you, Caleb? What do you think? Just, just, just from little things. Little no, things. yeah, I get it. Hey, it ain't no, it ain't, it, it's all love. Uh, I'm calling a little bit different though. It's uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fourth round uh, TKO. Wow. Okay. So you guys, you guys are fixing. I'm, I'm calling first round. I don't know who. <laughs> uh, but uh, hey, we'll put it this way: if if it is first round, that means that means that we get to drink and eat that much sooner. So you know, I'm not I'm I, I'm not going to be upset if it ends in the first round. I, I I'm okay with not being a Mystic Mac, but you know. <laughs> That, that, well, hey, man, I know all the spots down here. So if, well, I know Jim does too. He's a native, so uh, uh, he's a he's a Florida resident. Uh, he's too. already got plans with his uh his wife for for weigh-ins because I almost hit him up. <laughs> uh, hey, where, where where are you taking her? Because uh, if it's got good food, man, I'm I might take my coach there. <laughs> <laughs> I got actually got a question from Sheena. Sheena oh, would boy. like to know uh, any friendly bets between you both for. Who and if one of you get the knockout finish? No, but I mean we can make them now, man. <laughs> yeah, let's make a bet. Let's do uh, it. Definitely, man. When it, when it, it's just it's just like this is cliche, but I think always think that the um, whoever wins definitely has to buy the the loser a drink, man. Hey, um, I'm just, yeah. So I'm even even if I if I do win, man, um, definitely if I win, I got you for your first round. Sounds good, brother. And same to you, man. Um, I actually, had already, I think I told a podcast the other day that all I really hope is at the end of the fight, I was like, the gym's still down to go get a drink with me afterwards. Uh, you know, um, I, that's just, I'm, that's the way I am with all my all my uh, opponents and, and future opponents. Like, man, at the end of the day, we're, we're business partners, uh, uh, really, because we go in there, we, we, we do what we got to do. And then after that, you know, we, we still got lives we got to live. But uh, but yeah, I'm down. Winner, winner buys a loser drink. What's the drink of choice, guys? Jim, what's your drink? What's my drink? Um, probably Jack and Coke, maybe Jack and Coke. I'm cool. With my kind of guy. My kind of guy. Like <laughs> Johnny Walker Black and Mountain Dew. It's the only thing I've ever <laughs> mixed with Mountain Dew that tastes good. Hey, can I join you guys for drinks too? Because I like those. <laughs> hey, of course. <laughs> Awesome, man. So any any closing words for you guys that you want to say to each other? I'll 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 give you guys the, the floor. Go for it. Jim. Yeah. Oh, so man, yeah. I just you know, last couple of days, train smart, train hard. You know, 
I need you to stay in the right mindset. I don't want a Caleb Harris who's who's 50%, 60%, 70%. I want a Caleb Harris who's 100%. You know, when I get the win, I don't want I don't want any excuses or whatnot. I want to know that, hey, this is the best version that you got from me. All right. So, you know, best of luck to, to the rest of your weight cut. Um, hopefully it's, it's easy and nothing crazy, man. And I'm definitely looking for a war, man. Same to you, brother, man. Train, train smart. Uh, we've already talked about it. But uh, once I win, no hard feelings. I'll be happy to buy you that drink. And, uh, you know, I, I'm looking to have fun, bro. This is this is so far the the highest part of the mountain that I've climbed because I mean a, a year ago I was in, I was a nobody and a year ago you were in the UFC so you know to, to be co co-main event in a card with you is an honor and I can't wait to toe the line with you brother awesome man awesome guys I want to thank you both for being on the podcast at the same time to talk about your upcoming fight obviously two classy guys and it's always a pleasure to talk to you. I will see you guys Saturday. I will be at the pay-per-view doing some interviews, so hopefully I could uh, get a couple of words from you guys uh, before or after. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Guys, grab your Bare Knuckle Beast shirts. Hit me up. I got sizes for everybody. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> All right, guys. God bless you, and uh, we'll see you Saturday. You too, All bro. Right. See you. Bye. Thank you. You got it. Oops. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Uh, guys, thank you for tuning in to this special edition. I like to call before the bell. Uh, we just want to get some some little uh, topics in and conversation in with the two fighters before they do battle. Uh, I mean, as you can see, Jim and Caleb are just super, super classy guys, and they're great fighters, and they're going to put on an amazing show. As you can see from the footage, um, you know, Caleb with that brutal knockout that got millions of views, uh, went viral. And of course, uh, the beast himself, Jim Ehlers, uh, just love watching that, that, that guy fight, man. It's just so exciting. He, you, you're going to see it. You got to order this thing on pay-per-view fight TV app. Uh, check it out. It is going to be what I like to call a barn burner. This thing is going to be a really, really good match. And the card itself is going to be a great card. So, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Again, guys, please do me a favor. Tomorrow night, big episode tomorrow night. If you're a bare knuckle fighting fan, if you're an MMA fan, a boxing fan, you got to check this out because tomorrow night, 8 to 10 p.m., uh, maybe even a little after 10 p.m., we never know, but we're going to go live 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship 10 prediction show. Uh, we're going to go through every single fight on the card. I got pro, uh, pro fight analyst Ray Jr. coming on with me. Uh, he's going to get real technical about it. We have fighters calling in. Jeff Houston's going to kick off the show with us. Uh, Dave Feldman scheduled to call in. Stitch Duran scheduled to call in. A bunch of fighters on the card will be calling in some surprise guests as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, so please tune in. Uh, you will never, I promise you, see a prediction show quite like this. So stay tuned for tomorrow night. Uh, so guys, thank you again. Please do me a favor. Share this thing. Bang the share button. Uh, let people know in the community uh, what's going on. You know, got two great guys ready to do battle. Big pay per view on Saturday. Let's uh, let's heat this thing up for BKFC, man. I love it. And uh, do me a favor, give me five stars on Apple Podcasts if you got Apple. That just helps me grow the show. And of course, uh, follow again at a guy think podcast on social media, the website guythinkpodcast.com, and please subscribe. Do me that favor, huh? Love you guys. God bless you. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow night for the show.